I have a student. Uh, um, I think I have a student in uh, in India who attends my writing group meetings at like 3 a.m. every time. So I don't know how he does it, or and I appreciate his dedication. But um, yeah, it's one of the unique challenges of doing everything by Zoom. I think. Yes, yes. So I'm gonna write that word "unique challenge." That's a unique challenge uh, that we are all sort of facing these days. <laughs> Yes. Okay, Stephen. So if you cannot turn on your camera, that's that's perfectly fine. Otherwise, Rachel, Shini, Simon, whoever can, please turn on your cameras so Tim can get to know you a little bit and uh, then we can start. Before we start, however, I would like to share my screen and show everyone the document that we are going to be following at least a little bit. So um, we will have the guest speaker from the Center for Writers in our workshop today. I have prepared a template for taking your notes, note taking template. Uh, this one is only view only. So if you want to make it uh, editable for yourself, you have to click on the file and make a copy, rename it and put it in your Google Drive. Um, Tim might not mention all the categories that I mentioned, which is perfectly fine. Uh, you can definitely make your own categories and add some more spaces to write in the template. At the end of the presentation, I'm going to ask you to summarize in your own words one of the topics that Tim has mentioned. So please uh, listen carefully, take notes as you are uh, listening, and you might have a little bit of a chance to write new expressions and vocabulary down. So just like I just mentioned the word unique, you just write it in there and you can uh, use the Longman dictionary to find the meaning of that word. Some students are who are in person and you're not following this template. It's okay. You can simply um, you can simply take notes on a piece of paper. Is that okay, everyone? Um, hold on, just give me a sec. Maybe because one of the first students says take notes. Slow down. Okay, sure, sure, sure. Good, good. Uh, we have a few students who are in a lower level class. Tim, I think this is new information. Lower level class students, if possible, we might have to slow down a little bit. Uh, highly, okay. If possible, we can slow down a little bit. I sometimes might have to ask you to repeat uh, the answer just so students are able to catch the information. Is that okay? Sure, yeah. At, at any point, if you have any questions or if there's any concerns, um, yeah, please just let me know and stop me. Good, so students who are online, feel free to ask a question and put it in the chat if you need, if you did not understand something. So uh, Tim will be ready to answer some of the questions. Okay, Mohammed Talal is there. One more time, Jacob, Chen, Peiwen, if you can turn on your cameras, I would like you to do so at least for a little bit. And uh, I think we can get going. What do you say, Tim? Sure, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm ready to go, I think. Okay, uh, awesome. Uh, can everybody see the, uh, the slide? Not yet. No, not yet. Um, is is my is it screen sharing? It should say welcome right there. It no. doesn't. It's not screen sharing actually. No. Okay, let's um, try that again then. It's okay. I'm gonna make you a co-host as well, and that's okay. okay. Sure. In the meantime, students can get their notes ready, so that's okay. We can give you a little bit of time. Uh, make you a co-host. Make a co-host. That might help. Oh, is it uh, sharing now? No. Okay, that's strange because it says it's sharing on my end. Uh, hmm. Yeah. Students, do you see anything? Because I don't see anything. No picture. Okay. So let me try to sort this out. Maybe. If you can, if you disconnect and connect again, 
Do you think that might yeah, work? Yeah, sure. Or, 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 if you want, you can share, if you can send me your slides and I can share for you in the worst case. Oh, yeah. there we go. There was something happening. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Perfect. Has the slides come up now? Yeah, there we go. There we go. Okay. You all see it? Yeah, it says welcome on it. Yes. Good. 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 Okay. I don't know what I don't know what changed, to be completely honest. I didn't really do anything different. I just did it the same okay. thing three times. And uh oh. it'll happen. Beyond beyond so our thank heads. You all. Yeah, thank you all for uh being here and um inviting me to talk to you a little bit about uh our writing center, the Center for Writers. Um, you'll have to excuse me a little bit. I did have a I had a filling in this morning. Um, and so the, the right side of my face is kind of drooping because the freezing is still in effect there and talking is a little awkward, but hopefully that's not too, uh, too distracting. Um, so anyways, uh, yeah, so my name is Tim and I am a uh, peer tutor at the Center for Writers at the University of Alberta. Uh, and I've been invited here just to talk to you a little bit about what our uh, writing center does, um, sort of what uh, we can help you with, uh, who we are as a writing center. Um, and as well, uh, I've just prepared um, a few short tips on the topic of using quotes and paraphrasing and citing, uh, because I heard that that is something that you are working on uh, in this workshop. Um, so. I'll just start by introducing uh, who we are. Uh, the, so the Center for Writers, so the C4W, um, is a peer tutoring service uh, that offers one-on-one -on -one writing support to all students, instructors, staff, alumni uh, at the uh, University of Alberta. And all this, uh, all our services are offered uh, free of charge, so you don't need to obviously pay for any of our services. Um, and uh, our clients are at all different sorts of levels, so they can be you know, first year students, they can be you know, uh, students in the Faculty of Extension, they could be instructors, um, and we help students with really any type of writing assignment, um, and we help students from all disciplines. Uh, and our tutors um, are actually current students, all our tutors are current students. And so this is really what we mean by when we say uh, we are peer tutors. So we're not professional tutors in the sense that um, we're being uh, paid sort of as like uh, somebody who's above you. And but as peer tutors, we really try to help you as people who are sort of equals to you and or who are working at the same level as as you are. And so all our peer tutors at the uh, Center for Writers are trained uh using a uh, in a course uh, in writing center theory and uh, practice and as well um, we're all extensively trained in helping uh especially non-native english writers uh with their writing so if english is not your first language uh, we are we're especially trained to help you with your writing okay so what do we actually do at the uh, center for writers mm -hmm. uh the main thing we do at the center for writers is on tutoring um, so you book an appointment with a tutor and the tutor will go through your writing with you or go through and discuss your writing with you. Um, and we will help you in whatever way that we can. So that is the bulk of what we do at the Center for Writers. Uh, but we also um, have handouts that we give to students. We also uh, do workshops, although because of COVID, we aren't doing any workshops currently. Um, we give class presentations like I, I'm doing now. Um, and we also have uh, writing groups for international students. Um, so these are sort of like mini uh, courses or seminars that uh, one of the graduate student tutors will uh, give to a group of international uh, to, on different writing topics. Um, and so what kind of uh, assignments or what kind of types of writing do we help you with? Um, and the answer is really any sort of writing that you might have to do. So whether that's a lab report, whether that's an essay, whether that's um, an email or a job application or a resume, um, all these sorts of different kind of writing, as long as it's writing, um, we can help you with that. And even things like presentation slides, you know, if you have a presentation coming up and you want somebody to go through your presentation with, um, we will also help you with uh, stuff like that. So really as uh, writing center tutors, we help you with any kind of writing you might have to do. Mm -hmm. So one more time, I am going to just repeat one more time what you said very briefly. You basically help students with any kind of writing task they might have in their class, right? Yes, Excellent. that is correct. Excellent. Yeah, yeah. so 
Um, I'll talk a little bit more about um, when you can come into to the writing center, and the answer is basically um, any time, right? So you know, let's say um, uh, you struggle with grammar, or you know, you're getting a lot of uh, notes on your your papers that you need to fix your grammar. You can come into the center for writers, and we can try to help you with that. Or let's say maybe you're um, you know, and you're unsure about some of the ideas that you're writing about, and you want somebody to listen to them and to give you feedback on those ideas, um, we can help you with that as well. Um, maybe you're an international student or a recent immigrant and you don't really know about the rules of writing in a Canadian context, um, then our, our tutors can help you and sort of guide you um, writing in, in Canada in English. And maybe you don't have any particular struggles or you're doing pretty well, but you still want to grow as a writer, um, you know, come into the writing center and we can help you sort of learn what the next steps uh, help teach you what the next steps are in, in growing as, as a writer. Mm -hmm. So, if, um, and so if, if I can stop you here very briefly, so the Center for Writers is not necessarily for students who are struggling. It is for anyone who needs the second pair of eyes and even even just a little more encouragement and basically somebody who can just navigate and give me a little like direction how, how to write properly. So I don't, it doesn't mean if I go visit you that I am a bad student. In fact, that no. I, I am probably a pretty good student if I'm going to visit you, right? <laughs> yes, yeah, that, that, is, that is definitely true. Um, you know, um, obviously we do get students who are sort of, you know, they have a deadline coming the next day and they come in last moment, um, but, Usually students come in, you know, at the beginning of their assignment, in the middle of their assignment, at the end of their assignment, um, not because they feel like they need somebody to do their work for them, um, but so that they can sort of learn where to improve on their writing. So definitely the Center for Writers is not a sort of um, a punishment place or it's not sort of a place that you go just to say, you know, you need to fix fix this, this, and this, and that. It's really a place where you can go to get uh, another student to listen to what you have to say and to sort of discuss your writing with them uh, and what you can fix and what you can make better and what, what is already good. So yes, definitely it's not a place just for bad students. It's a place for all students at all levels at any stage of the writing. Good, I think that's very helpful. Um, yeah, yeah. So don't don't ever feel discouraged for coming to the Center for Writers. Actually, please come in as early as you can. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about what we can help you with at the Center for Writers. So um, as an example of the things we sort of uh, discuss at our, read, our at our meetings or, or these tutoring sessions, um, let's say you're working on an assignment and you don't even know exactly what you want to write yet and you're still sort of brainstorming or planning, feel free to come in then and, and get some help uh, and get some feedback on your writing. Um, let's say you're trying to create uh, some thesis statements or you're trying to organize or develop your ideas and your arguments a bit more, or maybe you want to improve the, uh, the cohesion or how well your writing flows. Um, you want to improve the grammar or the um, learn how to effectively use and cite sources in your writing. Um, at all these different writing uh, stages, um, you can come in to uh, get help at the Center for Writers. And so um, sort of related to that point, right, we can sort of think about the writing process as having all these different steps to them. You know, we sort of start off with a topic or an assignment. We um, sort of start writing down some ideas that we might have and we start organizing those ideas and we create a draft, we revise that draft and then we, we proofread before we submit our assignment. Um, and so really a lot of students think that uh, the writing center is somewhere you come in to help proofread, and so they just come. You just come in to get your mistakes fixed, um, but that's really not what we do. That's not what we do at the Center for Writers. We help students at every stage of this writing process. So wherever you are in your assignment, or wherever you are in whatever you're working on, we can help you in your writing. So even if you don't have anything in writing yet, right? Let's say you haven't even written anything down yet, and you just want somebody to uh, talk to about your ideas and get something started, we can help you then. And then let's say maybe tomorrow you have an assignment that's due and you just want somebody to go over the assignment with you to make sure that all the final things are okay. We can help you at the very end of the stage too. So. Tim, Tim before you yeah. go to the next slide, can I just ask, uh, just looking at this writing process. So from the topic until the proofread, 
what is the usual time that you would think it should take a student from the topic until the proofread? Uh, is it is it a one day thing? Is it a one hour or is it a two month process? <laughs> that's that's a great question. Um, and sometimes it depends on how much you have to write. So let's say you have to write a very long essay or a final paper, then you probably want to take more time with that. So maybe you want to start uh, a week or a month before and start preparing and finding ideas, gathering evidence before you start writing. Right. Sometimes maybe if it's a shorter piece, maybe you only want a, a week uh, to, to work on that. So it depends on how large your assignment is and how much you have to do for it but the the most important thing is never ever start it like the night before right because you can't do all of this in in one day right so always look ahead and see when your deadlines are and then think okay i'm going to take one week to find evidence i'm going to take another week to write a draft then i'm going to take another week to uh proofread it and edit it and then i'm going to submit the assignment Right. So always think ahead and try to give yourself as much time as you can to go through this entire writing process. Mm -hmm. Sounds okay. good. Okay. Great. So okay, this is how how can you actually uh, book an appointment with us then? Uh, so you can book with an appointment with us at the Center for Writers by visiting our website at uab.c4w. And so once you visit this webpage, you will see a very nice button for book an appointment. And as of now, because of uh, the pandemic, all of our uh, tutoring appointments are online, uh, which actually makes it quite good for students who are not in Edmonton or, or um, are in other countries. So you can book a, an appointment with a tutor online, and then you'll use uh, our online system to meet with our tutors and to work on, on your writing. So um, if you're interested, and booking one of our services, uh, please visit our website uh, and book an appointment at the link on, on the website. Okay, so that, that was my uh, blurb about what the Center for Writers is and what we do. Um, and so the last thing I want to talk about today um, is just uh, five tips on, on using quotes and citing quotes, because I heard that that was something that you guys are working on in your uh, in, in, in your workshop. Um, and so these five uh, tips are the first one is to uh, remember that less is more. The second one is to make sure to explain your quotes. The third one is to free write about your quote. So this might be a, a new term for some of you. Um, the fourth one is to use signal phrases. And then the last one is to remember to cite whenever you're using somebody else's ideas. Okay, so the first tip is that less is more. So whenever you're using quotations or whenever you're trying to quote from a passage, um, you need to try the least amount of quote possible in order to make your point. So I have these two example um, paragraphs here. And one, uh, in the first one, you can see here that the writer has just decided to take a long passage from the book that they're reading and just put that into their writing. Whereas in the second passage, the writer has decided to take just one sentence from that longer writing um, and then include it in their writing as the most relevant point, right? So whenever we use quotes in our writing, we always want to make sure that we're using the least amount of quote possible to make our point, right? Uh, the, second, uh, the second point that I want to make is that along with using less of a quotation, we want to make sure that we're explaining our quotations, right? So one of the mistakes that students often make is thinking that quotations explain themselves, right? So if you just put a quotation there, everybody's going to know what you want them to get out of that quotation. But as a writer, it's super important to remember that quotations need to be explained, right? So you can see again in this example, and the second uh, writer, that the second writer has taken a shorter quotation, right? He's, they've taken only one sentence, but instead they've included a, a couple sentences or a sentence here that explains that quotation and explains why it's important for their piece of writing, right? So we need to make sure that we never ever just leave a quotation by itself, but we make sure that we have an explanation that goes along with every single one of our quotations. Okay, so then you might be wondering then, um, well, I don't really know what to say about my quotation. Um, so how can we figure out what to say about our quotation? 
And so this is my third tip um, that I'm going to present today, which is to use a strategy we call free writing. Um, so has anybody here heard of the term free writing? Has this ever been anything that's been introduced in your class, uh, Susanna? Well, it has actually, we do often start our read and write workshop with a free write. So they, oh. they might have heard about it, yes. But we haven't done free writing about a quote. <laughs> right, okay, great. Well, um, I'm, I'm, I'm very glad to hear that. Um, and so I'll, I'll introduce just um, free writing about a quote. And so the practice of free writing is basically just writing continuously for a short period of time. But when you're writing, when you're free writing, you're never going to stop to edit or fix your mistakes. Um, and the main point is just to get your ideas out of your mind and get it onto a piece of paper, right? So sometimes we like to think all and then just write down what we think, but often it's actually better to write as we think, right? Or sometimes as we write, we figure out new ideas. So free writing is something that's going to help us generate new ideas. So here's an approach that you can use to free write with a quote. So let's say you've read your passage and you, you have something that you want to write about and you find interesting, um, but you don't know exactly what you want to say about it. So how can we free write with this? So the first thing you can do is you can look at your quote and then you can ask yourself these two questions, right? First is what part of the material do you find or do you think is the most useful or the most interesting? And then the second part of the question is what part of the material do you find the most difficult? Or maybe what do you find uh, the most unexpected, most confusing or the most unclear? Right. So as you start asking yourself these questions about the quote that you've chosen, you can sort of take five to 20 minutes and then write continuously trying to answer these questions, right? Trying to say, okay, what is interesting? What is um, confusing? What don't I understand? Or what do I understand, right? So the point of these free writing exercises is just to get you to try and answer these questions. But remember, as you free write, there's three things you need to keep in mind. Um, the first thing is do not pay attention to grammar or spelling, right? So you're not going to hand in your free writing for marks, right? So you don't need to care about what your instructor says about your free writing. Um, the second is you the, the writing in your free writing doesn't even have to make 100% sense, right? Because it's just you writing what's in your mind. And so don't worry too much if your ideas aren't 100% coherent. Um, and then the third point, and this might be helpful for some of our international students here, is that if you feel like you can't write in English what you're thinking in your head, or let's say if there's a word that you don't quite know in English, um, but you know in your native language that you think would fit really well, then just write it in your native language, right? Because once again, you're not going to be handing in your free writing to your instructor. And the most important thing about free writing is just getting your ideas out of your head onto a piece of paper, right? So if you need to do that using a different language, you can do so, okay? So then once you have done all of this, then look at your free writing and then sort of look at the ideas you wrote down, think about if there's anything interesting there, and then you can sort of try to use that to then move on to create a draft or to organize some thoughts, right? So that is, uh, the practice of free writing in a nutshell and the practice of free writing about a, a passage in a nutshell. Okay, uh, the, the last two tips are sort of more, um, uh, are sort of more uh, just sort of uh, small things. Um, and so the fourth tip are to use what we call signal phrases. So, you know, you can think of like a signal as, as like a sign. Right. So whenever we're introducing a quote or we're paraphrasing or we're summarizing something from another author, then we need to make sure that we use words that make it clear that we're using somebody else's language. Right. So let's say, um, you know, let's say author A claims or maybe author B criticizes or um, author C reports. Right. So you can use these sorts of words to introduce the fact that you're taking from somebody else's writing. So these are what we call signal phrases or signal words. So you need to make sure that you're using these whenever you um, are quoting or paraphrasing or summarizing. Okay, and then the last tip, and, and I'm sure it's a tip that, or it's something that you've heard before, 
is uh, when to cite. So the important thing to remember about citations is that anything that isn't your own original idea needs to be cited, right? So this is not only for quotes, right? So let's say you took a quote from a book and you need to cite it because that's quite clear. But even if you paraphrase that author or you summarize that author um, in your own words, those ideas don't belong to you, right? They belong to that author. And so you need to make sure to cite uh, that author and give them credit. Now, there are two instances where you don't need to cite information. And the first is if it's your own original idea, because obviously then, then you are the author. Um, and then the second instance is when something is common knowledge, right? So if I were to write something like Ottawa is the capital of Canada, there's that idea doesn't belong to anybody, right? And so you can just keep that um, in your writing and you don't need to give anybody uh, a citation for that. Um, and so let's say even after you've considered all these, you're not quite sure, right? You think, well, maybe this is common knowledge or maybe it isn't common knowledge. If you're not sure about whether you should cite something or not cite something, it's always better to be safe than sorry and just include a citation, right? Because the consequences of plagiarizing and being caught for plagiarizing are very severe, whereas adding an extra little citation to something isn't going to really hurt your writing. Okay. So then these are the five uh, tips that I have for quoting and for citing. Remember that less is more. You need to explain your quotes. If you need to find out what you want to say, you can use free writing. Um, when, you in, uh, when you use quotations, remember to use these signal phrases and remember to give credit and cite uh, whenever you use somebody's ideas that aren't your own ideas. And once again, if you have any questions or you feel like you need any help at any stage of these processes, um, you know, book an appointment with us at the Center for Writers. You know, we'd love to talk to you and help you um, at any stage uh, of, uh, with any sort of questions you might have about your writing. Um, and yeah, so that's all I have for, for today. And um, thanks for having me here again and uh, listening to me uh, talk about our writing center and about uh, these topics. And I'll, I'd be happy to take any questions if you guys have them. I am going to encourage students who are online, especially to uh, write a question in the chat. We are going to give them a little bit of time to think about it. Students who are in the classroom probably won't be able to uh, write anything in the chat, but maybe if Vicky hears any questions, she can, she can type it in the chat from uh, them. I, however, would like to ask a question. Uh, if you can give, give a quick definition for the students, uh, what is the difference between a quote and a paraphrase? quote right. and a paraphrase. Okay, so a quote, right? Actually, I'll just illustrate. Um, a quote is when you take something directly from another work and you use those authors' words, right? So you say exactly, you write exactly what the other author wrote, right? So that is what a quote is. Uh, a paraphrase is when you keep, when you take something that another author wrote, and then you keep all the ideas in it, but you just phrase it in different words, right? You phrase it in a different way, right? So that is what a paraphrase is, right? So they're very, they're similar, um, but a quote uses the same words as the author and a paraphrase needs to use different words, right? And different phrasing than what the original author used. Mm -hmm. And both of them use uh, quotation marks or no? No, yeah. So whenever you use, uh, whenever you, quote something, you need to make sure to have those in quotation marks. So it's clear that you are uh, um, quoting something. But if you're paraphrasing, you don't use quotation marks, right? Because those are your own words. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, I have a student, Rustam, here. So Rustam has a question. Rustam, would you like to say the question, ask a question, write it in the yeah, chat? Uh, yeah, yes, I have a question. So Tim, uh, it was interesting to listen to you. So uh, I'm interested in writing, so I have to improve it. And uh, my question is, uh, is it uh, some courses for writing different types of uh, essays in your center? Great Are question. there any courses? Uh... Writing uh, courses for writing different uh, types of essays. Or workshops, right. workshops maybe, workshops. Yeah, yeah. So right now we don't have any work 
because of uh, the pandemic. So usually we'd have workshops on different types of topics and you know the different types of essays would be a topic that we could cover. Um, so unfortunately right now we don't have any courses or workshops that we offer at the moment. Um, but you know if you come and book an appointment with a tutor, they could sort of guide you and talk to you about mm -hmm. some of those different things. And I think you could find some handouts on our website that talk about the, the different types of essays as well. Okay, I see. Thank you. I think the handouts are actually quite good. Uh, I don't know, Tim, if you have uh, maybe on the, on the slides, but I know I looked at your handouts. You have lots of good handouts that students can simply just uh, skim and scan through. And there are a lot of suggestions and ideas for international students that can, that can take advantage of. So the handouts are quite good. Sure. And I, I can actually show you the, um, the handouts right now, if you want. Yeah, sure. Uh, yes, please. Let's see if I can. Uh... I can see you have as many tabs open as I do. <laughs> okay, this is this is just one window too. So. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. So let's say this is our so this is our website. Um, if you want to book an appointment, you can click on this link and it'll take you to our portal. So you can make an account, um, and then once you make an account and go in, you can see that there's all these different tutors. You can see what uh, each of the tutors. Um, do you know and and what their specialization is and you can learn a little bit about them and book an appointment um, so this is how you book an appointment um, and then so our handouts you can see on the left here we have workshop handouts and we have all these different uh, handouts here so um, we have you know writing tips for ESL students um, writing thesis statements brainstorming strategies um, writing lab reports or even you know preparing a poster or something like that so we have all these different handouts and this is all on uh, our, our website so you can uh, check that out uh, check these resources out uh, there if you uh, want to uh, find something that might help you mm -hmm. and Tim I saw I saw that your instructor or the, the tutors are fairly busy uh, how common is it for you to the international uh, second language English learners in your um, uh, to come for help? Yeah, I would say I don't have any statistics on this, but I would say probably over half of the students we see are um, international students or non native writers uh, of English. So definitely uh, that's that's a that's a big part of the reason why we as tutors get a lot of training um for working with international students is because that, that we, they form a lot of who we work with so. excellent um one more question from me how how did you become a good writer is there any tip that you would say you know what guys this is what definitely works this is how i became a good writer <laughs> huh. That, that's a good question and i think that assumes that uh i am a good writer or yeah, that I've arrived that's um <laughs> I don't think that's quite the case yet. And I think that's really important to remember is that writing is um, not so um, something you can just like, uh, you know, take a, take a six hour course in and then master it, right? Um, writing is something you hone and develop um, the, your entire life. And so I think my biggest tip for improving as a writer is to just keep writing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the more you write, um, the more you will, the more you'll improve, right? And you know, I remember when I was an undergrad. Um, sometimes I'll I'll go back and I'll read some of my lab reports that I wrote when I was in second year or third year. I'm currently in the fourth year of my PhD, so quite a long time ago. And I remember I always I always look back and think, wow, I really sucked at writing back then. Um, but you know, as 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 I wrote more, um, you know, you get better at it. And I'm sure that you know, six years from now, I'll look back on my writing now and think, oh, you know. I could have improved on that, right? I could have grown on that, right? And so this is really that, um, you know, you just, you just, you learn to do better as you do more of it. And as you, you know, talk to other people about your writing. So that's one of the great things about the Center for Writers is that you can get that support and that friendly sort of um, peer support um, as you, as you grow as a writer. Um, so don't have a, don't have a, you know, um, oh, essay writers hate, you know, this person for having this tip for improving our writing, because there really is no magic solution to becoming a better writer. Um, besides, I would just say, you know, keep writing, right? And, and get feedback on your writing, talk to people about your writing, so. Mm -hmm. 
Excellent. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. I think that's very useful to hear for the students. Uh, for them, I think sometimes it might be very frustrating because it seems like it's a never ending process and there is always the same mistakes and the same mistakes. And uh, it seems like a long time. But I think if you make peace with the fact that it will take a long time and uh, the more you do, it, the, the better you will get, then uh, it's, 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 it's good. I think there is something comforting uh, in that. Um, do you still use a dictionary when you write or you don't use ever a dictionary? Um, I don't use uh, a dictionary. I do use a thesaurus though. Thesaurus, um, yeah, so, yeah, that's what I meant, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, so definitely like when I, you know, uh, when I need to find a new word for something, I will literally just Google search synonyms for blank, right? So a synonym being a word that means something similar to another word. Um, and I'll and I'll try to look for synonyms that way and I'll try to learn uh, more words. So, you know, um, and, I, and I think I just want to add, um, you know, one, one thing uh, onto what you just said, Susanna, which is um, just the frustration at the process, right? Um, it's kind of funny because like I'm a I'm Korean uh, I'm a Korean Canadian and I'm sort of in the process of the opposite uh thing right now where growing up I spoke a lot of English and I uh, was very very uh, good at English I learned it but I actually lost a lot of my Korean ability right mm -hmm. um and now as an adult I'm sort of trying to relearn uh, a lot of uh that Korean right and trying to reconnect with uh, it's kind of interesting because it's kind of an opposite situation to I think uh, what many of the students here are experiencing and um, when I was younger I think I always felt super frustrated that like I was not as good at Korean as I wanted to be right and so actually that was really discouraging and I would, it would make me really give up more than anything else I just say oh well you know screw this I don't want to you know, I don't want to even bother with this, right? Because, you know, it's taking so long and I don't think I'm ever going to improve, right? But now that I'm a little bit older and I've gone through a little bit more in life and I've sort of helped more people with English writing, I think I'm sort of starting to see, yeah, it's going to take, you know, three, four, five, ten 10 years for me to relearn Korean and to, you know, be back to where I want to be um, um, in, in terms of my Korean ability, right? And while I can sort of see that as being really discouraging, right? Um, you can also sort of think of it as being, that's just the reality of what it is as, as, you know, somebody learning another language, right? So don't be discouraged, right? Just keep going, right? Because it's always worth it. And the other thing is, is that, you know, you're always going to have somewhere to go and improve on as a writer. And as long as you understand that, I think it gets a little bit less frustrating to think about, well, you know, um, you know, I don't want to spend years doing this. It's going to feel like a waste because it's not going to be a waste, right? Um, and yeah, I just want to give you an encouragement that way. So. Yeah, because even, even in any kind of job that you're going to have, the students are going to have in the future, the better they write their emails, the better they can... Uh, uh, express themselves, the, the better, more efficient they, they will be, right? So basically, it's never going to go to waste. And so that logical no. thinking that you're developing while learning to write, I think is super, super, super good and beneficial for you. So thank you for sharing uh, some of those personal stories. I think that makes it even more interesting. I have a final, final question for you. So what I maybe I didn't catch that at the very beginning. So what PhD are you doing in? Yeah, so I'm a PhD in, in, in biology, or I'm doing my PhD in biology, and uh, um, I study uh, biology. So I study how bacteria regulate um, their genes and stuff like that. So. so interesting. So you are not even in humanities, but you are in sciences and yet helping people how to write. So that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. Uh, scientists do write. So you know, scientists do write. Yes, but uh, that's, a, that's a great reminder as well. So uh, I think Rustam had one little question here. If you have any recommendations how to improve writing, but I think you mentioned some of that. Uh, any books for reading, grammar books or something else? Is there anything, is there your Bible that you have for improving to write? Is this something that you always, always refer to? <laughs> sure. Um, I, I actually do have um, one resource that some of you are, may already know and some of you may know. Uh, have uh, already been referred to um, if you do want to get more references for writing. So if you search do OWL, so actually I'll just put oh, it in the yeah, chat. Oh yeah, OWL, right, OWL. Um, if you haven't heard of this resource, I would say it's probably the most useful 
resource there is on the internet. So um, OWL standing for the Purdue Online Writing Lab. And so you can see here that they have really, uh, they have um, pages on almost every single writing topic you can think of. They have free exercises. They have, um, uh, yeah, they have free exercises and free, you know, examples and free uh, pages. So um, definitely, if you want to learn more about a specific thing, let's say I'm, I'm really struggling with commas, you know, oh, well, then I'm going to go to punctuation, I'm going to look for commas, and look, they have um, all these different resources on using commas in our writing, right? So I would definitely say check out um, Purdue uh, OWL if you want more specific help on very comprehensive help on, on your writing, um, if, you want, if you're looking for a resource. Yeah. Great, I think uh, that's a great resource. It, it can be a little overwhelming, but that's probably should last students for a long time. If you're using it in PhD, then students can definitely start using it now and that can last them for another 10 years. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure, yeah. Yes, excellent. For when I prepare materials a lot, so definitely recommend it. Thank you. So we have taken a little longer time than you expected. Sorry about that. Hopefully we didn't no, take- that's, that's completely fine. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, we are going to stay on online for a few more minutes, but Tim, you feel free to disconnect whatever, when, whenever. Uh, and uh, I just really want to, hold on. We are just going to give you a little nice little reaction and to, to say how much we appreciate. Hold on, students. Can you show, can you, uh, can you show a little bit of a reaction to Tim for doing this little presentation? So thank you from, <laughs> thank you from me for the students. And uh, we're hoping to maybe have some of your other tu tutors uh, in the future to come and join us again. Sure, yeah, it was a, it was a pleasure being here and uh, hopefully, um, you know, what I said was helpful and definitely, you know, um, come visit us. You know, we'd love to, we'd love to see you um, and, and talk to you, so. And you are free too, right? <laughs> we're free, yes, no, the university pays us. Us, so. Yeah, so that's really important to know too. All right, Tim. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you guys. Okay. Yeah. Bye bye.